You are now tuned into the network, Bruh. the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics, dumps it down to a more simple language. Today's topic is describe the need for private IP addressing. I know it's been a long time since we've done a video, but I said I'm going to go ahead and continue this series like I promised y'all. This is a topic in the uh, CCNA exam version. I don't know what version it is, but this is one of the topics. The topic number 1.7. Let's go ahead and talk about the need for private IP addressing. Now, before we talk about private IP addressing and the need for it, we need to talk about the differences between LANs and WANs. And I think we talked about this in the routers video. If you um, haven't seen that video, go back and watch it in, 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 in a, it's at the beginning of the CCNA playlist. But, you know, just a quick kind of recap. LAN is a local area network. It's basically your local area network. As you can see right here, this part right here, as you can see, local area network. It could be your school. It could be your, you know, your office. It could be your home. It could be, it's your building. This is your local area network. That's what the, that's what a LAN is, right? As opposed to a WAN, which is usually outside of your local area network or the wide area network, which is really represented by the internet. So anything that is outside of your organization or your house, that would be considered the wide area network. Anything beyond your demarcation point is right here, this little line right here, right? That is the WAN, right? So now that we've talked about the difference between LANs and WANs, let's talk, also talk about what's private and what is public, right? We know what public is, right? Public is anything that is outside, right? Private is, you know, internal or inside. It could be your, you know, well, we know what your privates are, right? Anything that we want to make sure we don't show whatever, uh, what your private is, right? So if we talk about LANs and WANs, which one would you say is public? Public would be the internet. So you guessed it, the WANs, right? The wide area network would be considered public as opposed to what's private, that would be your local area network. That is what's private, right? So now that we've talked about the difference between LANs and WANs, we said that WANs are public and LANs are private. So this would be your home, your office, your school, your campus, whatever. That is private, right? Now that we've talked about what's private and public, now we can talk about the difference between public IPs and private IPs. Remember what we said IP addresses, right? Before we can get on the internet, we need an IP address, right? How do we know whether we need a public IP or a private IP address? Well, let's talk about the differences between the two and then we'll determine which ones we need, right? So a public IP address is used over the public network, right? Or wide area network, like I said, right? So we use public IP addresses to communicate outside of our network. We only need a private IP address to what? Communicate within locally. Right? As you can see right here, use within the private network. So we need private IP addresses to communicate within our network. But guess what? We don't always communicate within our network. We need to communicate outside our network, right? So we need to use a public IP when we need to use the internet, right? So as you can see right here, recognize over the internet as opposed to a private IP addresses. These are not routable in the internet. We use private IP addresses only internally, right? But obviously when we need to like watch a a great informative video, like a network, bro, YouTube video. You need to use a uh, public IP address to communicate with Google servers to watch a YouTube stream, right? Public IP address is also unique over the globe, as you can see right there. So there's no such thing as a duplicate public IP address. You, all public IP addresses are unique. How do we make them unique, right? Well, we have these uh, companies called, uh, they're basically, they register, we register IP addresses with them, not just ISPs, not the internet service providers, but I forgot the name of them. Um, as there's right there, uh, assigned by the uh, ISP right there. What am I thinking? Are you fucking stupid? Assigned by the ISP provider or IANA, right? That's called the uh, Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. They basically the company that assign IP addresses and stuff like that, right? Public IP addresses are paid. We have to pay for a public IP address with the IANA. Private IP addresses are free of cost, so we can assign an internal IP address privately but that's free of cost, so we ain't got to do all of that. But obviously, when we need to communicate outside of the local area network or the wide area network, we have to pay for a public IP address. And we've done, we do that with the ISP or the IANA. Now, we have all these ranges to determine whether an IP address is public or private. Just pay attention to these. This is something you, this is really crucial to know uh, for the CCNA, the ranges of public IP addresses and private IP addresses. Private public IP addresses are within this range. Typically, when you see it start with a 10 like this right here. Or, wait a minute. I think these numbers, are they backwards here? Bruh. You know what? I took another look at this. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, yeah, this, this right here, these are public IP addresses. I mean, private IP addresses. Anything that start with a 10, a 172 and 172.31, 16, 172.16 and 172.31, and then 182.168, 
this is backwards right here. These are actually private, put PV. That's private. And this is the public IP address range. So my bad for that, y'all. I, I got this slide. I got this from somewhere on the internet. I can't remember. But those two are trans transposed right there. That's supposed to be private. And these are public IP addresses. So my bad for that. Now that we've talked about the differences between a private IP and a public IP, uh, let's talk about what I was talking about earlier, the IANA. That's the company that basically they uh, find the IP addresses, right? Or they govern the other companies or registries that assign these IP addresses. We got the IANA, which is the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. This is a standards organization that oversees global IP address allocation, autonomous system number allocation, which you'll learn about with BGP, ASN numbers, right? Root zone management in the DNS, media types, and other internet protocol related symbols and internet numbers, right? So we got the IANA that basically sit on top of the uh, food chain right here. And then we have five what's called uh, internet registry internet registries, right? We got this company right here, I believe that's Latin America Computer Network, something I don't remember, but they assign the IP addresses and, and DNA, they, met, they manage DNS and stuff for the, uh, Latin America. Then we have ARIN, which is the, uh, I believe that's the American Registry Internet Numbers or something. Uh, I don't remember the, you, you could Google all this stuff up here, right here, right? But there's basically, there's five uh, regional internet registries, right? This one's for Eurasia or Middle East. This is for Africa. And then we got this for Asia Pacific. They are all governed by the IANA or Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, right? So they're the ones that pretty much manage the public IP addresses, right? We manage our private IP addresses which usually start with what I said, the 10, the 10, uh, between 10 and 10, 255, the 172 networks and the ones and 192 and 168 networks, right? Right here at the bottom, the private, whereas these are public IP addresses, right? Don't, don't get these two confused. Remember they're transposed here. I got this somewhere on the internet, this slide right here, right? So shout out to those guys. Yeah. Now let's talk about why we had to have public IP addresses and private IP addresses. The main reason why was because we, as you can see right here, when we started uh, creating the internet, it was it was actually earlier than 1983, but that's when it started getting popular, right? We started getting to about 1 million IP addresses being handed out right about, I'd say, the early 80s or mid 80s right there, right? Now, once we got to probably the early 90s, as you can see, the internet just kind of like boom, right? All these, um, what I said, the uh, RIRs, they just started handing out IP addresses like another one. And another one, and another one, and another one. Until we started running out, right? Later on, we started realizing, oh, snap. We, we started running out. So we needed to come up with a way to, uh, so that way we didn't run out of IP addresses, right? And that's when they, there was like basically three ways of, to prolong using IPv4. The first way, first thing that they did to fix this I, uh, IP address exhaustion was uh, IPv6. There's a basically new version of IP, IP with much larger addresses. Uh, it uses 128 bits as opposed to IPv4, which is which uses uh, 32 bits, right? And then the second second bullet point, as you can see right here, it says assigning a subset of public IP address to each company instead of an entire public IP network to reduce waste using a feature called classless internet routing or CIDR, sometimes they call it. Uh, that was basically a way of, uh, basically we changed the subnet mask and uh, use variable subnet masks so that way we, we can, uh, instead of use, wasting so much public IP address space, right? So once you change the subnet mask and you have like say slash, uh, slash 30, uh, 31 or slash, or slash 30, we're using, there's only, you're only using about four usable IP addresses there, right? Um, and then the most popular one that helped uh, continue the usage of IPv4 is a uh, network address translation, or sometimes they call it NAT, which allows the use of private IP addresses. Now, this is the reason why, the main reason why we use pub, um, private IP addresses, right? We use um, private IP addresses internally, like I said, right? So let's say the 10 network, right? But notice here, company one is using the 10 network, but so is company two. So since these are not unique, right? They're pretty much, they're, they're kind of like duplicate IP, IP addresses, but guess what? They're not routable on the internet. We use them internally. Once we get out to the internet, we use a feature called NAT to translate a private IP address to a public IP address. That's what allows us to uh, continue using IPv4 because we started running, IP, running out of IP addresses. And that is the main reason why we use private IP addresses, which is the main point of this slide right here describe the need for private IP addresses. It was basically because we ran out of IP addresses 
and the RIR companies, which another is another like, one, another one, another, one, another, one. just handing them out like we wasn't gonna run out. They didn't realize a refrigerator was gonna get on the internet, a car was gonna get on the internet, computers, cell phones, all these other devices needed IP addresses, and we just started running out of them real quick. And that's basically why we needed to use private IP addressing to do not to translate a private IP address to a public IP address. That is all I got for y'all today. Follow me on these social media platforms if you want to know me on a personal level. That's my YouTube page. That is my Twitter handle. I don't really be on Twitter that much. It's been a while since I've been over there. It's like, you know, it's like cobwebs over there. That is my Instagram if you want to follow me on Instagram. But anyways, we're going to try to continue these videos, these tutorials for the CCNA exam. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button on your way out. And for now, comment, like, subscribe to the network. Uh.